In this video, I'm going to show you how to make not one, but three different masking transitions that are super simple, but really, really effective. Also, a big shout out to Audio for sponsoring this video. I've personally been using them for all of my music for the past year, and I'll have more on them later. So for my first clip, I've got a clip here of a drone shot panning backwards of this city. And then the second shot, I've just got a time lapse here of the city. You'll also need some sort of sky that we're gonna replace the background with. So for this one, I've just got this clip here, which is this time lapse here of the sky. So I'm gonna start back here with my pen tool. And for this one, I'm just gonna draw a mask, which kind of sits over the edge of my screen. I can then come down here and just create a mask path and just go to the end of my clip and just drag this down so that we kind of end up with that mask following that horizon. Now you can also add just a little bit of feather on here as well if you just want to feather that edge. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off my background. I'm just going to drag my sky layer here in underneath and I'm going to scale this down and then shift it upwards. What I can then do is I want to create a null object. I'm going to move this up to about here, drag this up here on top and I'm going to drag these two layers or connect them using my pick whip to that layer. Then about here I can hit P on my keyboard and create a position keyframe, create a scale keyframe, hit U to bring those up create one in about the middle here and then another one about down here. So we got some keyframes spread out. And the other thing that I want to do is start to basically zoom into this shot here. And what I'm also going to do about here, I'm also going to hit R and start to create a rotation keyframe. that goes to about 180. So we do a full basically spin as the camera is going up and then down. I can also just scale this in a little bit more, something like that. And then when we're about here, what I'm going to do is turn on my next layer, drag this above my sky layer here. Now for this city show, what we need to do is remove the sky. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this. A really simple way is just by using the roto brush to create a mask over the sky. Select my sky here as best I can. I'm also holding option on my keyboard and I can just remove this part of my image. I'm just trying to isolate just the sky part of our image. And once you've got that selected, then I can invert that because I only want to select this part of my image. Now I can basically just move my playhead out to the side and it's gonna to start to render all of that out by masking all those layers out. Then once I'm happy with that, I can just hit the freeze. That's all basically gonna render that out as a finished clip. And then I can work with that clip in my next part. So now with that clip back in my main timeline, I can also just add a little bit of feather and mess around with the edge shift if I need to adjust any of that particular effect. But once I've got that, then I can basically parent this to my null object towards the end of my timeline here. And then I can basically just move this up. One other thing I'm going to do here is with this, I'm also just going to scale in just to hide that edge down here. And you can see we pretty much have that finished effect. What I'm going to do is take all of these. I'm going to create an easy ease. And I'm also just going to right click, create keyframe interpolation and go to continuous Bezier. Go to down to the graph editor and I can move up on these just to try and smooth out that motion. One other thing that I did in my original composition was I added a adjustment layer and then I also just came up here and add the force motion blur. That basically just adds some nice motion blur to the image you can see here and that just makes the whole thing look a lot better. Now these visual transitions look great, but they're nothing without the use of today's sponsor, Audio. Now I've personally used a lot of different audio websites over the years, but about a year ago, I personally found Audio and I've just been using them ever since. The reason I use them is not only because they're affordable, but their quality and their library is definitely a cut above the rest. Audio have made it super simple to browse through all their playlists, and I love using their electronic and cinematic pop themes throughout all of my tutorials. 
even better, with the Audio Pro plan, you also get access to their huge library of sound effects. I'm just putting the finishing touches on my next cinematic video, and I can tell you that sound effects have been a monumental part of that video. You get access to the sound effects, the music library, and everything you use as part of your subscription, you can keep forever. And even better, they're giving you 70% off your first year of Audio Pro when you use the coupon code Flatpak Effects. You can check it all out for yourself via the link in the description below. This is a really cool seamless masking transition. Here I've got two clips. One is just a drone shot pulling back. And the second one here is this car shot where the camera is sort of panning over the bonnet and then out to a wide shot. Now the thing about these two clips is they've strategically been picked. The first one I'm trying to match to my bonnets. I need something smooth or a smooth surface that the camera can kind of zoom into and really hide that cut. For the second shot, you need to start with something that's close to that object that you're gonna pan backwards from. So we need it to be as seamless as possible and try and match. We're gonna use color grading to try and help match that as well. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start by creating a null object. I'm gonna move this null object somewhere around here and I'm gonna parent that sand layer to that null. So now we can control that layer. What I'm also going to do, start with a position property and create a scale property. Hit you to bring those up. And when we get to about here, I want to start sort of zooming into this area of my shot. And while that's also going on, I'm just gonna turn this layer off so we can see what we're doing. I wanna start with this layer. I'm gonna hit P and also create a scale keyframe for the car layer. And I want this to kind of animate out as well. So I'm gonna start with this right down in the bottom corner so that we kind of get a nice transition out from that bonnet. If I turn on this layer, you can see straight away, we kind of got something that's working, but we wanna create a bit of a fade between them. The way we do this is just by using a mask. So what I'm going to do is start by just drawing a mask which sort of runs along here. Now I wanna create a really wide mask here because I'm gonna put a really large feather on it. So if I come down to those mass keyframes, I can add a really large feather. And what I want to do is create a mass path keyframe. I'm gonna move this keyframe across. And for this one, what I'm gonna do is start by moving these keyframes out slightly. That's gonna help create a nice transition point as we're moving the camera across so that I can zoom this all the way out. So we kind of have that mask moving across. I can delete this middle one here just because we need two keyframes there just to kind of see what we're working with. You can even start by dragging these little keyframes in here if you want to stay on the bonnet longer. So if we want that to sort of start on the bonnet like that. Now I can take all of these keyframes, also make them easy ease just to help smooth all of this stuff out so that we don't get any jarring effects. Oh, you can see straight away, we kind of get that really nice transition across our bonnet. One other thing that I did, because it's going to a white bonnet on the second shot, it does help to kind of color grade that. So what you can do here is also just right click, create a new adjustment layer and just drag this over the car layer. Then all I did with that was I created up here a keyframe for the temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast. Then slowly animated these off to be zero. So we go back to our original shot and color grade. What that does is it creates a nice yellow tone to our bonnet of our car to help match those two, those two shots together. So you can see the final effect that we've got here on screen. Now this next masking transition is super simple and it's really effective. What you can do is if I've got one clip here of this overhead drone shot, I'm looking for a straight line or an area where I can zoom the camera through. For my second shot, it just got a simple drone shot that's going downward. This is like really important because as the camera zooms through, if the second shot's moving downwards, it just makes the whole thing seem a lot more seamless. So with my first clip, what I'm going to do is find the area that I want to zoom through. 
So for this, I'm just gonna select this part here of my road. And I'm also just gonna go down to my mask settings and I wanna create a mask path and keep it roughly in that position over the road. So as the road comes in, we wanna basically try and keep it in that same position. And once I've got that, then what I want to do is about here, what I'm going to do is create a position keyframe. And I want this to sort of animate out like this. So we kind of get this transition of it moving out. I can make these easy ease and we have that transition of that layer. Next, what I want to do is basically just duplicate this. And with that top one, what I'm gonna do is go down to the mask and invert that so that when we go to the position properties, what I want is I want that one to move in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna have that move out. So we end up with this opening between our two clips. Now there's one other thing you'll need to do and that's you might end up with this line going across. You can duplicate one of those layers, drag it to the very bottom. And if you bring up the mask properties, just delete that because we don't need that mask anymore. Now what we can do here is we can now turn on that background layer, which is our next shot. And you can see that it's already basically working how we want. What we can do now is basically to animate it, we can create a null object, move this to the top. We can parent all of our layers to this null. I'm gonna go down to the transform properties. I'm gonna create a position, a scale, and a rotation keyframe. Hit U to bring those up. And then I can start basically zooming into our shot here. And I can also rotate this around about 180 degrees. Now, one other thing you can do here at the end is you can also grab that background layer and just scale it down so that we can end up with that correct scaling at the very end. What you'll need to do to that layer is come up here and add a motion tile and then just scale up on these parts and mirror the edges. That'll help hide all of that stuff that we can see there. And one other thing that you'll wanna do is also take these right click and make them easy ease. If you need to adjust the position, you can do that here by moving that around. But if I go into those properties here or the graph, I can basically scale these out so that we kind of get a smooth transition. One last thing that I also did was create a adjustment layer and paste that on top like we did in our first one out of the CC force motion blur and that'll help create a lot of this motion blur. And there you go, we have our finished transition. So there's three different awesome masking transitions that you can use in your next video. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thanks very much to Audio for sponsoring this video. You can check them out via the link in the description below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.